Hi, this is Peter at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial number 85. So let's go ahead and open up Unity. And where we had left off, we had just started working on our camera controls. And we have it, the camera automatically jumping behind our character and positioning itself. So next step I want to do is be able to have the camera, when I move the mouse, uh, rotate actually around our player and I only want that to happen when I'm holding down the right mouse button so let's go ahead and open up our script that we're working on and I'm not going to be using the update function in this script so I'm just going to get rid of it right now and in my late update function I'm going to comment out both well actually we're going to keep these lines for now what I'm going to do is before the lines that we added before. I'm going to create an if statement and what I want to check for is the input if I could spell it and I'm going to be looking for get mouse button down and the mouse button I'm looking for the way it's set up is your left mouse button by default is 0 your right mouse button is 1 and your center mouse button is 2 so I want the right mouse button, so I'm going to put a 1 there, and we'll close this off, and I'm just going to throw a debug in here, and I'm just going to say, you know, right mouse, just so I know it's working. Now I'm also going to add a comment at the end of this line, because when we get to the input manager, I don't want to have to say, you know, get the input from, you know, if it's the right mouse button. I want to be able to have it be a user defined button. And after we get, you know, the functionality working, we'll go into the input manager and uh, set the defaults up and also show how the player can change them while they're, well, at least before they start the game. So I'm just going to make a note here. Use the input manager to make this user selectable button because maybe he doesn't want to use the right mouse button maybe he wants to use right shift but let's just go ahead and try this out and see if it works and I don't see why it wouldn't but we'll just check so I'm going to click the right mouse button and there we go. Make sure you have your actual game window selected before you start doing that. I'd gone up and clicked on the console. So there we go. That's working. Now to get the, the camera to swivel around our player, isn't that hard to do? And as a matter of fact, Unity comes with a script already. It's the most orbit script. So let's open that up. Now this is in JavaScript, but that's fine. It's very easy to convert. And the part we're really interested in is right here. Uh, this is pretty much all you need to swivel around to, to have something orbit around your character or a selected target. Now I'm just going to go ahead and select all of this here. I'm going to cut it, or at least copy it, and I'm going to come in and paste it in my little if block that I made here. I'm going to take both these lines that we had previously before. I'm going to move them to the top just so the people who purchased the script still have the lines there. But I am going to comment them out because I'm not going to use them anymore. Now I already know I'm getting my mouse button function call. So I'm going to delete the debug and I'm just going to tab all this in. All right, so let's go over this a bit. Now they have a variable here, what they're calling X, and another one that they're calling Y. And what they're doing is getting the input of the get axis uh, of the mouse X and the mouse Y. So the mouse X, what they're doing is saying when the player moves the mouse horizontally, uh, get how much they're moving. And it's always going to be a float value. They're going to multiply it by some speed that they've set up. And then multiply it again by 0 0.02. Or 0 0.02. 
And they're doing the exact same thing for the Y. They're just moving it according to how much you move your mouse up and down. Now this line here, I'm going to comment it out because I'm not going to add the clamp just yet. I want to get the full rotation working, then decide uh, how I want it to be clamped. But let's just take a look at that in the mouse orbit script. So it's calling this clamp angle. It's passing in its, its own value. And then it's passing in a minimum value and a maximum value. And if we come down and look at this function here, all it's doing is taking a look and saying, hey, you know, if we have an angle that's less than 360, add 360 to it. Because what you want is to have the angle between uh, 0 and 360. And then down here it's saying, you know, if your angle's over 360, you know, just subtract 360. And this line here, what it, it does is it takes a value, then you want the minimum value, which we're passing in, and the max value, which we're passing in. And all these values are floats. And it tells it, you know, uh, ret return this value of the angle, but it has to be between the min value and the max value. But since we're not going to be using this, at least not anytime soon, at least not in this tutorial, I'm just going to comment it out. So then they go ahead and make a rotation of a, uh, I always screw this word up, quaternion Euler. So it's basically just getting an angle for us based on the X and Y, how we're moving it around. And then it's adjusting its position to be equal to the rotation uh, times, a, we're going to have to put a new vector 3 in here. Now the distance, we'll be changing that as well. Let's just go ahead and start doing it. So the first thing we're going to need is an X and a Y. And we're going to make those private. So I'm just going to put them right under here. And I believe they are both floats. Yes, they are. So if you look, this here returns a float. Uh, X speed, we don't know yet because we haven't put it in. It's just a variable. But this is also a float. So we know X has to be a float. So I'm going to say float x, and I'm also going to do one for y, and they might actually tell us in their rotate script what they are as well. Let's take a look. Well, they didn't cast them as floats, but the fact that they have 0, 0.0 after it uh, kind of you know states that they want it to be a float. But in C sharp, you have to actually tell it what type it is. So we'll just tell it's float. So we're going to come down. Now we need an X speed and a Y speed. And that just basically is a, it's a modifier on how fast you want it to rotate. And we'd want those in ours as well. So I'm just going to copy these two lines. I'm going to come up and put them under the public part. Now just erase the var and go public. And we're going to make these floats. And we'll just leave it at, at x speed equals 250. And by making it public and having a value assigned to it in your script, uh, when you first attach this to a game object, that will be the default value. And we'll do the exact same thing for the y speed. So we have those two done. I'm going to come down and look at this line now. So in C sharp, when you have a float, you have to denote it with an F or it's going to think it's a double. And you'll get some error stating about uh, some sort of conversion error. You can't convert a double to a float or something like that. So those two lines should be fine. Now I'm not doing anything with the clamp, so I'm going to come down here now. And it's making a rotation. Now, if you take a look, we're doing a quaternion Euler. And if you're not sure exactly what this returns, uh, one way to do it, if you're in mono develop or something that has some sort of autocomplete pop-up, you can actually start typing it. And if you look over here, it tells you what the return types are. So it's going to return a quaternion. So we know that this here variable has to be a quaternion. So now let's come down and look at position. So the position is equal to the rotation, which we know is a quaternion. 
multiplied by, we're going to have to put a new vector 3 in here. Uh, the only vector 3, only time you have a vector 3 and you don't have to uh, put a new in front of it in C sharp is when you have something such as uh, vector 3 dot, you know, up. Uh, there's other ones there like right. These ones you don't have to. But when you basically are defining the x, y, and z variables, you're pretty much always going to have to use a new. So let's put an f there to show that it is a float, not a double. And another one here. And it wants to know on the z axis what the distance is going to be. Uh, by default, I was using the walk distance up here, right here. So we're just going to simply put that in there. And this is actually not supposed to be a space. And then the target position, which is fine. That's what we're using up here as well. And then down here, it automatically sets our, our rotation and our uh, position for our transform. Now, we've actually cached our transform right up here. So let's use the cached version. And this is returning a, uh, let me see here. Uh, yeah, it's returning a vector three. So we have to make sure we tell it what type it is. Now I'm gonna save it off and see how many errors I get. I'll open up the console and I forgot to typecast something. Ah, way at the top. So we'll make both of those floats. We'll go back in, no errors. So let's go ahead, I'm going to select my camera. 